Hello everyone. Um, this video is going to be a book haul. I am a compulsive, addicted, in need of rehab kind of book haul who bought, who buys books far too often. Well, that's debatable. Other people would say far too often. Me, not often enough. For example, I went to um, a shop today looking for one book and I ended up coming home with eight of them because they didn't have the book that I wanted. And then, yeah. So I actually wanted to do a book haul of all the books I've bought in the last couple of weeks um, since I filmed the bookcase tour. You'll notice that there's a new kind of setup. I bought like a little tiny tripod thing. Um, I got a new phone which records better quality. Um, and we have a new bookshelf, well, one shelf. That's my to-be-read list. You'll see a lot of those books kind of disappear from there in a minute, and they'll end up down here, or in front of me, um, because they're the books that I bought. So we're going to do that, and yeah, let's start. Let's do it. They've all disappeared. Well, not all of them, but you get the point. Um... I'm kind of terrified because they're precariously balancing here and I feel like they're going to fall on me or on my laptop or on the ground and make lots of noise given it's one o'clock in the morning. A plus. Um, first things first, I bought a bookmark, which is really cute. And hello, look, that's me. Um... You know, you can't read books unless you have a bookmark. Oh, who am I kidding? I use receipts, I use tissues, I use my phone as a bookmark, like, a cord. I'd probably use a person if they stood still long enough. Anyway, um, so, just precariously here. This is one of the piles. And there's another one, same size next to it. So, I'm just going to go through, um kind of give an outline of what I think they're about, going off the back of the book, kind of talk about why I bought the, everything like that. So, in total, there's 5, 10, 15, 22 books here, hey, for the bank account. I thought about saying, you know, I'm not sponsored for this video and stuff, which is kind of a given, but, um, my... God, how I wish I was. It would save my bank account so much. Anyway, moving on. Um, first book, World War Z by Max Brooks. I have um, another book by him, which is The Survival Guide, The Zombie Survival Guide. I actually want to write a book on um, kind of like dystopian, apocalyptic, post-apocalyptic type world. So this is more for research purposes, as well as I freaking love the movie. Um, basically, what it's about is it's an apocalyptic world where there's a pandemic of a disease that basically makes people turn into, you know, a horde of man-eating, mindless zombies. So it follows the kind of survival um of different characters and it's told interestingly through extensive interviews rather than you know the generic type of plot or like you know a to b to c to kind of plot um so i'm really interested to read that and see what i can kind of take from it um second is eat pray love by elizabeth gilbert um I've wanted to read this for a very long time, um, and if I'm, I might be mistaken, but I'm 99.9% .9 sure that this is where, like, Katort comes from, <laughs> um, but please don't quote me on that. Um, I've wanted to read this for a while, I actually have another book by her called Big Magic, I believe it is, and I haven't actually read all of it, but from what I've read, I actually really enjoy it. She's, I've seen her do a TED talk on the elusive creative genius. Check that out if you haven't. Um, and her story's just fascinating how, you know, 
in her mind, this was a book, a memoir, so it's basically a memoir, um, of her travelling around the world, and kind of going soul-searching to find out who she is after, you know, an affair and a divorce and etc and so on. So, I am really interested to read that, um, because I know that it's, like, massive, you know, over 10 million copies sold, but, yeah, like, I personally want to see what the hype is about, um, as well as I really connect with her just as a motivational speaker. Next is these three. Good old me, you forgot the third one, haha, <laughs> so I have book one, two, and four. Um, it's Throne of Glass by Sarah J Maas, uh, Crown of Midnight by Sarah J Maas, and uh, Queen of Shadows by Sarah J Maas. I um, bought these today, I've wanted to read kind of like a fantasy, you know, I've read so, like it feels like what I've been reading for so often, um, for a very long time, has been kind of realistic adult fiction type stuff, um, and I haven't really delved into the fantasy, even with young adult, because I love reading young adult, I haven't been reading the fantasy side of things, um, and I actually really, really love the genre, but I don't know, I just haven't found anything that's kind of picked my fancy or anything like that, so I grabbed these, um, because I've heard a lot about her, um, it, it sounds interesting, it has the things that it makes me want to read it, you know, 18 year old girl, trained assassin, um, she got caught, her freedom in return for one huge sacrifice, blah blah blah, um, and kind of destiny, live or die, everything like that, but it's really, it's that other world type thing that's really drawing me to fantasy at the moment. I think, you know, <laughs> Earth or current reality kind of can get a bit depressing at times and I really want to kind of escape it um, and not just go live, you know, through another character in another, like, country but, like, completely leave the entire freaking Earth and planet. So I've got book one, two and four of those, I think it is. Um, and I'm really, really interested to read them and kind of it's been so long since I've read like you know young adult fantasy uh, sci-fi type stuff so there's that next Carol I bought this specifically because I've seen the trailer for the movie and I really liked it and I I'm one of those people that I like to read uh, read the book before watching the movie or the tv series that's why I haven't read Game of Thrones yet uh, watched Game of Thrones yet because I haven't read it. Um, so basically, Teresa's just an ordinary sales assistant working in New York. Beautiful woman walks in. Um, first shock of love. Awkward 19 year old. Um, it's basically like these two women are falling in love. Um, but it's kind of dangerous for them to do so because there's so much to lose in doing it. Um, you know, one of them has a boyfriend who she doesn't love and, you know, it's something that I really, that kind of icky moral dilemma is what I really love. And I also love that it's not like a heteronormative, heterosexual type of book, um, because I've read enough of those. <laughs> Next. There's a book here that I... Oh, no, it's there. Okay. Um, the Light Between Oceans by M. L. Stedman. This book is um, an Australian book. I read very, very little of um, Australian literature, and I kind of want to change that. The most I read was um, Indigenous Australian books, and that was for um, a job that I had, so... I'm really interested to read something, one, because I want to, um, but it sounds really kind of heartbreaking, 
you know, 1926, Tom Sherborne is a young lighthouse keeper on a remote island off Western Australia. The only inhabitants of Janice Rock, he and his wife Isabel live a quiet life, cocooned from the rest of the world. Holla to you, I wish I were you. Then one April morning, a boat washes ashore carrying a dead man and a crying infant, and the path of the couple's lives hit an unthinkable crossroads. Only years later do they re discover the devastating consequences of the decision they made that day as the baby's real story unfolds. Like, I think if it was um, an adult who had survived and turned up and they were like, yo, surprise, um, the book wouldn't interests me half as much but because it's a baby um just that idea of the baby having like you know such a big backstory um like I'm really interested to see how the plot kind of moves around that so it's that one <sighs> Amanda Hocking this is what is it? Um, trial? Trill? Trial? It's a tri Oh, T-R-Y-L-L-E. I'm going to call it Trial. Um, it's the trilogy. It's three in one book. Um, this kind of... My mum suggested this, and she's like, why don't you look at that? And I'm like, why bother? Um, and then I picked it up, and the first things I read was, when Wendy Everly was six, her mother was convinced she was a monster and tried to kill her, and I'm just like, one, that's not something I would write <laughs> myself. Two, that's so cool, and you know, she's a changeling who was switched at birth, and like, you know, just that mystery, and again, it's very similar to this in the way that one, it's a child, um, and two, kind of exploring their kind of backstories and their realities, I think it would be really, really interesting. Um, because it's both about, you know, their stories coming to light when they don't want them to. Okay, next. Mrs. Peregrine's uh, Home for Peculiar Children. I went to the movies the other day to see Finding Dory, Warcraft, and uh, Alice Through the Looking Glass, and I saw a trailer for this. Um, I actually bought this weeks ago, so I'm kind of heartbroken because I thought it was going to be something different. Um, I want to write a book on a freak show, um, like the olden day freak shows, but kind of in a contemporary setting, so that's kind of why I picked this up, and this is not that. But, whatever. Um, basically, Abandoned Orphanage, um, Strange Collection of Healer Photographs, a uh, horrific family tragedy sets 16-year-old Jacob journeying to a remote island off the coast of Wales where he discovers the crumbling ruins of Miss Peregrine's home for peculiar children. And basically, the children um, were more than just peculiar. They may have been dangerous and quarantined and somehow impossible, though it seems they may still be alive and everything like that. But what's interesting to this is they all kind of have their own power, or at least I'm kind of basing what I'm talking about um, from the trailer that I saw, but they all kind of have their own power, which is really interesting. And, you know, I'm also interested to see how this kind of relates to the movie and whether it does an accurate kind of thing or not, or whether the adaptation will be, you know, as some are crap. Next, Water for Elephants. I have never watched the movie, I have never read the book, but I really want to. Um, eventually, uh, shoot at Jacob, uh, put in charge of caring for the circus menagerie. Um, he meets Marlena, the beautiful equestrian who is married to August, a charismatic but violently unpredictable animal trainer. Oh can tell which character I'm not going to like. Jacob also meets Rosie, an elephant who seems unmanageable until he discovers an unusual way to reach her. I love elephants. Um, and granted, that was probably one of the big reasons that I, like, you know, picked it up. The other thing that really interests me is, like, you know, he jumps into a passing train, he enters a world of freaks, swindlers, and misfits in a second-rate circus struggling to survive. That... 
you know, again, it's, I guess it's kind of like, you know, the researchy side of me because, hey, how can I write a book? And is there stuff in here that can inspire me? Um, so, that I'm interested in. <sighs> oh my god, we're not even halfway. And it's already 13 minutes long. I ramble a lot. Deal with it. Um, okay, The City of Mirrors by Justin Cronin. This is the third book in the Passage Trilogy. Um, I bought the first and second book back in 2012, I believe it was, 2012-2013. Um, <laughs> believe it or not, I haven't actually read them. I've read half of The Passage. Um, the second book is The Twelve, the first one is The Passage. I've read half of The Passage, and I actually really, really liked it. It's just, I put it down and I never picked it back up again. It's actually up there, the one with the red, um, that I actually want to read over semester break, so, um, basically it's, from reading that, there's all these, you know, it's a viral experiment that kind of goes a bit wrong, and there's imaginary monsters, and new generation, and the plague that almost hu ended humanity, and, yeah, it's everything that I want. The dystopia, the post apocalypticness. Okay, next. Um, I didn't actually buy this recently, but hey, it's relevant because I bought the second book. <laughs> Haven't actually read either of them, but I think that I'll like them, and so I'm willing to give it a try. Um, basically, 1946. Claire Rendell goes to the Scottish Highlands with her husband Frank. It's a second honeymoon, a chance to learn how war has changed them and to re establish their loving marriage, but one afternoon, Claire walks through a circle of standing stones and vanishes into 1743, where the first person she meets is a British army officer, her husband's six times grand great-grandfather. How convenient. Unfortunately, Black Jack Randall, what a name, is not the man his descendant is, and while trying to escape him, Claire falls into the hands of a gang of Scottish outlaws and finds herself a Sassanac, an outlander, in danger from both Jacobites and Redcoats. Blah, 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 blah. Um, I'm really interested in the historical perspective, but looking at it from, a con well, not really contemporary, but a more contemporary perspective, you know, there's, when was it, 1743? So 203 years difference between, you know, when this character is transported back there or not. So that's what I'm really interested in about this one. And of course, this is the second book. Don't really want to read the back because I think it will give stuff away for the first book. This one is probably first on my to be read list. There's a piece of paper in there. Don't pay attention to it. Um, this was what I was going to read, but then <laughs> didn't because um, I had, you know, shit to do. Um, it's called You Know Me Well by Nina Lacour and David Levithan. Um, I kind of was reading the blurb on the back and was like, oh my god, snatch it up straight away. It's young adult. Um, so Mark and Kate sit next to each other every day, but their paths outside of class never cross until one night, Kate spots Mark out in the city miles away from home. Kate is lost, having just run away from a chance to meet the girl she's been in love with from afar. Mark is in love with his best friend Brian, who may or may not feel the same way. Little do they know how important they will become to each other, and how, in a very short time, they will know each other better than any of the people who are supposed to know them well. Like, I ship them already. Mark and Ryan. Yes. Um, again, it's that kind of... I really... I haven't read much LGBTQ kind of... Um, literature. I don't think there's much market out there for it. Um, and that's why I really want to, that's why I'm really interested as well, because I'm writing a book on that type of thing, like that type of genre, that type of life. Um, it's really interesting that it's, you know, he's not falling in love with a, um, a girl, but a guy. So it's kind of denouncing that heteronormative kind of hegemony or dominance in society. Next book. Barry or Rats by Hennigan. I heard so much about this freaking book in 2013, although I think it came out in 2012. Um, yeah, 20, no, 2013. Um, when I was working at the bookstore, people would come in and buy it all the time. Um, it's a true story, I believe. Uh, well, it's based on a true story. 
of how in Northern Iceland a woman is condemned to death for her part in a brutal murder of two men. Um, she's sent to live out her final days with this family. Um, the family avoids speaking to her because they're like, oh my god, she's a murderer. Um, only Toti, the young assistant reverend appointed as her spiritual guardian, is compelled to try to understand her as he attempts to salvage her soul. Um, as the execution draws closer, her tale of longing and betrayal begins to emerge, and with it, the family's terrible realisation that all is not as they assumed. I'm really interested in this because it's written in Northern Iceland, and so much of what I read, or at least it's based in Northern Ireland, but so much of what I read is um very US-based or UK-based. Um, and by UK-based, I mean specifically England rather than, you know, France or Germany or anything like that. So I'm kind of attempting to broaden my horizons, and I heard so much about this, like, it, like, earned so many prizes. Um, so I'm really, really interested to see, one, if it lives up to the hype, but two, to read about something that isn't kind of what I normally read. Um, next book. A hardcover copy of The Wiseman's Fear by Patrick Rothfuss, which is the second book in, um, I think it's going to be a trilogy. Um, the Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss, that's the sequel to it. Um, I haven't actually read this. This is how much I've read of it. Ha ha. That much. I actually, you know, I've read three chapters and, I have, like, I read those in 2013. Um, but I knew from reading it that I was going to fall in love with it. It's just, I thought that he would, you know, have the third book out by now. Um, I think the first, when was this book put out? This book was put out 2007. This one was put out in 2011. So it's been five years. You know, it was two years when I bought the first one, and I'm just like, all right, well, we'll just wait like another year or so, and the book will be out. No. Boyfriend needs to get his shit together because people need to read this damn book, get over this series because it's just too long to be holding on to a series without anything. So, that being said, I'm really, 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 really excited to read it. Next, Cop Town, Karen Sorter, hardcover book, 10 bucks. Hey, um, kind of to build on my Karen Sorter collection, I guess, you know, Brutal Killing detective, blah, blah, it's basically like a murder mystery type book, um, which is like the easiest and most simplest way to sum it up, and yeah, like, it sounds very much like a lot of her books, um, where it's just, you know, murder mystery, but yeah. Can you tell I'm going to read that very soon? Next, Peter V. Brett, The Painted Man. Again, I want to get into more fantasy, so that's kind of why I bought this, and I also bought this on sale. Um, so, as darkness falls, the demons rise. For hundreds of years, these creatures have terrorised them and died, slowly culling the human population. It was not always this way. Men and women did not always cower behind protective magical wards and hope to see the dawn once they battled the demons on equal terms, but those days and skills are gone. Um, Arlene, Arlene, Arlen, Arlen, Bales lives with his parents on their isolated farm until a demon attack shatters their world. He learns a savage lesson that day that people, as well as magic, can let you down. Um, rejecting the fear that kills as efficiently as the creatures, Arlen risks another path in order to offer humanity a last fleeting chance of survival. Hell yes. Um... Demons, Other World, Fantasy, bring it on. This one was recommended to me, um, Illuminae, by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. Um, I've heard a lot about this. I'm sceptical because of the way that it's kind of formatted, to be honest. Um, I'm very like, you know, give me a book that reads front to back, like that, not... 
you know, front to back like. But I'm willing to give it a try. Um, you know, it's set in 25.75, which is like futuristic, hey, bring it on. Um, two rival mega corporations are at war over a planet that's little more than an ice-covered speck at the edge of the universe. Too bad nobody thought to warn the people living on it. With enemy fire raining down on them, exes Katie and Ezra, who are barely even talking to each other, are forced to fight their way onto the fleeting and to the evacuating fleet with an enemy warship in hot pursuit. But the warship is the least of their problems, a deadly blank, like, it's been blacked out in parts intentionally, obviously. A deadly blank has broken out and is mutating with terrifying results. Interesting. The fleet's AI, which should be protecting them, may actually be their enemy, and nobody in charge will say what the blank is going on. Lol. As Katie hacks into a tangled web of data to find the truth, it's clear only one person can help her bring it all to light. The ex-boyfriend she swore she'd never speak to again. Because, you know, ex-boyfriend, survival. But then, you know... Oh, it's going to be a trilogy. Hey. His um, new book comes out fairly soon, um, I believe. Gemini. Um, so I want to read this because it was recommended to me by someone that I actually admire their reading. So I'm going to give it a go. And then last book, finally, 25 minutes later. Um, Magda Shubansky's um, memoir. I really like Magda Shubansky. I think she's a great voice for the LGBTQ community. Um, I have loved her since watching Babe as, like, you know, a child. I've loved her since, like, I loved her in Cat and Kim. Um, I loved her in the Crocodile Hunters movie, Collision Course. Um, so, yeah, I'm really interested to kind of get to know her through here. I think she's an amazing, amazing person. Um, so I think it will be really interesting... To kind of look at it. And also... She's fucking hilarious. So, yeah. But yeah, thanks for joining me. It. Thanks for looking at my long, long book haul. Hopefully they aren't all that long. Because my wallet will cry. And... Yeah. Until next time. Um, I kind of want to steal someone else's catchphrase. But I'm not going to. Because it's not really relevant. But... Happy reading until next time.